Jason, what's today's topic? Agents. Ooh, good one. So I hear a lot of folks talking about agents and agentic architectures, but let's back up a bit. What's an agent? Well, that's the fun part. No one seems to agree what exactly an agent is. So in my mental model, an agent is an AI with a job and the tools necessary to do that job. I've referred to them before as like AI microservices or tiny little AI apps. How do you think about them? You mean something like a customer service agent? I always try to think of things in this like I would something in the real world. An agent should be something that helps me to get something done more effectively, get it done better, or to accomplish something I wouldn't have been able to do otherwise, like a customer service agent helping me. So some folks say that agents must act autonomously, but acting autonomous is also kind of vague. If an agent uses tools to research a topic and then summarizes the results for you, is that acting autonomously? Other people say that agents must be able to reason about their environment based on the inputs and based on their own outputs. And I read in one place that an agent was a system that was prompted an LLM more than once before returning to the user. I think we can agree that the definitions vary wildly. So how can we talk about agents without having a clear idea about what they are? So Andrew Ng wrote a blog post about this challenge and suggested that instead of talking about things as agent versus not agent, we just acknowledge that different kinds of systems can be agentic to different degrees. Okay. So an AI completing a task autonomously is agentic, and an AI researching and summarizing for you is also agentic, but maybe not to the same kind of degree of agentic. Yes. So to better appreciate the full range of agenticness, let's do a quick speed round of all the different use cases for agents. Go first. All right. An agent that could help me review my emails and create tasks on a digital to-do list based on the highest priority emails that come in. Or an agent that could use weather data and other information to decide when to water my garden and how long to water it for. Or an agent that could respond to people reporting bugs and automatically gather missing information and seek clarification on confusing parts of a bug report and then route the bug to the appropriate team to resolve. Or an agent could use a camera to look at a Rubik's Cube and then use robotic manipulators to solve it. Do I get any fun ones yet? Oh, here we go. I could use an agent also to build a travel planning agent that takes my preferences and needs into account, researches things like destinations and hotels, and even activities, and then suggests an itinerary for me and use a collaborating agent to book everything all in one shot. Or I could build an agent that suggests an outfit for every day based on the weather and what's currently clean in my closet. All right, I think we're getting some pretty cool examples here for folks to work with. By the way, if you're looking for code for some of the agents that we've actually discussed here, these are available from Google, and we've put the links to that code in the description below. I think we've seen that there are lots of different types of agents, and it's more important to think about things being agentic than it is a specific definition about an agent or how to build it. But since we want to talk about building specifically, yeah. what are some things that I should consider when I'm building an agent? So I think one of the most important things to remember is that an agent doesn't necessarily need to even incorporate an LLM. If your agent doesn't need generative AI capabilities, you probably don't need an LLM. You may be able to use a simple hard-coded algorithm to achieve your goal. That actually makes sense. Agents were around before LLMs took off and either used hard-coded rules or used custom-trained models, things like BERT. I remember doing this as a part of robotic process automation bots even just a few years ago. And those options, and more importantly, the use cases for the, those agents are even more valid today than they were five years ago. Exactly. And if you do use an LLM, you can use tools like function calling to assist your agent in completing a task. You can also give your agent the ability to retrieve data from data storage. So you can use techniques that we've talked about already. All right, so we've been talking about agents as if they're single entities, but I think agents can work together, right? One way we can think about agents is that we could have different agents with different functionalities or different tools, and the agents can even interact with each other to accomplish a goal. For example, maybe I would have a shipping agent and a customer service agent that can interact to figure out why a package never arrived for a customer. You can have these agents working together also to improve the output. Maybe you have one agent that produces blog posts and a second agent that critiques them for style and technical accuracy. You can create a loop where the critical agent feedback goes to the producer agent and they go back and forth refining the blog post until the critic agent doesn't find any more issues. So if I wanted to get started building agents, is there a best place to begin? It does really depend on your particular agent. 
A very simple agent could just be some business logic with an interface to enable interaction with the environment or with the user. And since we're talking about degrees of agentic behavior, some prompts and business logic packaged together could also be an agent. There are some frameworks for helping you build agents. And if you want some guidance about this, they have more things around architecture and orchestration and even build. Also, general purpose frameworks for interacting with models can be used to build agents, especially agents that are designed around a goal and some tools to achieve that specific goal. So if you'd like to try building an agent yourself, we've included some links to tutorials using different approaches and different degrees of agenticness. And we also have a tutorial for building agents and getting started with Vertex AI Agent Builder. And there's even one more tutorial on building a vacation planning agent using Firebase and GenKit. Lots of options. Can't wait to see what you build. Happy prompting, everyone.